Hey folks, it's Rob, and this is Armageddon Empire. It's a game I played way back in 2008, and actually played quite a bit along the way, but I haven't played it in a couple of years. Such is the nature of being six years in the past when you buy something. And I thought, hey, this is actually a cracking game, and we'll bring this out for um, you folks to see and see if you like it. I do apologize for my voice quality. I'm afraid I'm coming down with a chest cold, and I'm trying to get a few things recorded before I lose my voice entirely. So, uh, bear with me. <laughs> I'll try to edit out anything that sounds too much like coughing or um, me rasping. But um, we'll get along here. Now, Armageddon Empires is a turn-based semi-tactical card game with a dice mechanic. It gets complicated, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new game. And you can customize your start out here, as you can see, in various ways, including enabling the expansion content. I'm not going to do that just right now. I'm going to keep things fairly simple by just using a starter deck. Now you have four different factions. You have Imperial, Machines, Mutants, and Xenopods. And uh, I thought we'll start with Imperial. Because that's the human beings, and why not root for the humans for a change? So, I need to select some opponents. I'm going to select random opponents just to keep it completely out there. And now we're going to start a game. So first off, we're rolling to see who starts first laying out their start time. Looks like we're second. Okay, so the Xenopods apparently have played theirs, now we're going to play ours. And this is our starting area, and the starting area doesn't change dramatically, but you can kind of like park yourself in one direction or another. Just grab your tile and place it down, like so. Okay, now we can place our stronghold, so here's our Imperial Palace card. That goes down. That allows us to collect these resources, uh, which is like human, material, energy, and... Tech? Yes. So now the map will be generated with completely random tiles, uh, so thing that, like there are specific tiles that are, will appear in the course of a number of playthroughs, but essentially what you are doing, now I can buy additional dice here uh, by like say, for example, expending resources I've gained to get additional dice, and you may want to do that if you want the initiative. I'm not going to because I'm going to need the resources to be able to build, say, like a scout tank down here. The ties have to be rolled out, so we're going second. Right, so, as you can see, we have our staging area down here. And I can send out a aircraft with, by using one of our energy. Or I could be, uh, start this recon tank. Now, I will do that. And then I'm going to use some of my action points to create an army. I'm just going to call it uh, uh, Expedition 1. I'll put that in there so it's not in the garrison. in the unit. Now we can take that unit and go explore it. You see we only have so many. Well first off there's like a fuel range. So there's a range for how far away you can be away from your base without suffering penalties. Now I only have two action points left so that's not really enough to do anything else with yet. There are I'll display our hand here. I can't draw another card because I don't have enough action points. I need three. So we're going to end our turn. And again, we're just going to roll on the standard three. So we were 
last this time. So I'm going to activate my expeditionary unit and just kind of start swinging back. You can see we're fighting a bunch of empty nothing, but there's definitely something here. But uh, it's a fairly weak recon unit. I don't want to just drive it into a city not knowing what to expect. Can't really do anything else with my resources at the moment, but I'll be able to build this Panther tank next turn. Or I can recruit this uh, leader on Or Harris. So, save up, as it were. second. And again, I will drop this tank, panther tank down. Alright, so I've scouted this whole immediate area. As you can see here, we've now had a semi healing zone here. We have some here slavers. I may want to capture that. I have three action points left, so I'm going to grab a card. And that allows us to get the Imperial Keep. You can put, drop this on a supply resource tile to collect resources. It's also a defensive item. team in, right? And I'm going to add the tank to it. Now I can't move it this turn because I've already moved them this turn. And because there aren't any things I can play at the moment, I'm going to just draw a card. And yeah, I'll draw a card one. A scientist. He'll be interesting. Um, hands at maximum size. We'll put the hand away. And I will go in here. I can do things. Like for a material cost, I can upgrade to level 3, which will improve our ability to defend ourselves. Um, also, I can, like, create a new army using some of my action points, and I'll call it uh, uh, Engine 1, and have it sit there waiting for when I need it, because I have this AP sitting around right now, and there's nothing I can do with it. Get uh, ooh, can I, Hannibal Zarkov, Hans Zarkov, if I should may say, or Honor Harris. We'll recruit Honor Harris. That'll give us a leader option for later on in the future. And I will draw a card. Vincent Mudge will come in handy. He's a logistics genius and chief of staff. So. He'll improve our back end. Right, so let's take Expeditionary 1 and drive it into the enemy slavers. Right, so here we have our order of battle. And you can see that we have filled in slots like so. We're outside of our supply range, so this is a little annoying, but hopefully we'll be good enough to deal with some slavers. Um, we will start the round. Uh, how am 
right attack. Rolling one die to their three, unfortunately, but there we go. We hit. action points. I could make more action groups. I'm not going to. I can't draw any more cards. I don't think. Yeah, I can't. See, I have no human resources. So, using the cards I have is problematic at the moment. Now, this is an Imperial War College. It allows me to improve the base. Um, it collects a human resource per turn. But it also allows me to do research. attached to the city, well, to my base, and 
and I can use a leader to research here. So I can like build some advanced training here. Um, toughness training. So we beat the, the requirement, and so we matched. on a relevant infantry, mutant, xenogite, or robot card. Let's say, for example, these Uber Zone fanatics. Another thing I can do, if I had a leader on this grouping, is uh, build something to accumulate these resources, just a, a local kind of accumulation. And I'll put Honor Harris on Expeditionary 1. So now he's in charge of that. Now I could play this on, say, one of these. If it was a qualified unit, it is not. Okay. But since he's here, let's make one last use of him, huh? Let's go for... Let's go for firepower training. those for when I have enough human beings around to go and actually um, start a unit.
what do we got here? Cannibals. Right. We also have unmarked main money. Okay, we don't want to go into that. Well, the cannibals might be preying on the new resources I want. I have five action points in my draw. Artemis Vance, our Intel Mastermind, he's a stealth espionage expert. So I'll need a friendly Intel Center, but if I get one, he'll increase my, uh, my action points by two per turn. He'll fight enemy espionage, but I'll need an intel center for that purpose. Right now, I'm not going to buy him, because I want to get the other Emperor's own fanatic unit. And we'll transfer this unit into Legion 1 right now. the roll-off goes on for a bit. Alright, what do you think? Should we go after him? I think so. Berserk on here, right? Berserks get plus one attack and minus one defense each time it is hit for the duration of the battle. So, uh, if I hit it and injure it, it will be a stronger attacker, weaker defender. Damage is persistent. Remember how I took two points of damage running away from the slavers? That's still here. I'll need to bring it into a base to recover damage if I'd like. City. It is a one human, one energy site. I can set up a recruiting post now. General. Also, 
also set up an energy team, so they will collect energy resources from here. And now we'll send the expeditionary force out. limited in size because it doesn't have a leader. But it'll do just fine for a garrison unit right now and allow me to move around with it as well. Now, move Expeditionary 1 back to the destroyed city. It's just 
Costa Recon unit, but they have destroyed my pro collection units there. Counterattack stealth unit. Maybe not necessarily the best thing to put with the thinking about it. I'd rather have something with a bit more range and toughness to be to be honest. But they'll they'll do for a garrison in case that critter thing turns up. Um are finite, okay? You don't get them back later on. Uh, unit cards, there's only so many in your deck, and you can create custom decks, it's great. Um, but if units are destroyed, they're not coming back.
quick of a fat attack to occur with the remaining two fate action points. Emperor's will for two dice. Well, that's a failure. There we go. That's where they're based. And mortars and a ripper. Okay. Now to move my army out, it's going to require five action points. So right now we're going to actually use the crow. Um, oh, three hex range.
send Expeditionary 1 through that unit. Now you can organize these if they have like range. Say like range 2, range 1, range 1, range 1. So like I can move this one to the back row. Right? And it can shoot further. Spend hit points to gain plus four attack. We're not doing that.
Detected recon unit and they're attacking. Mm. But I am still reconned. I choose not to engage you. Guess I don't have that choice. I have to get through a round before I can retreat. I can't play taxi cards because I don't have a hero, that's right.
what I want. Okay. Thing to put in the front. 